Will the congregation please stand as you are able and face the cross at the entrance of the nave. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Donna, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In her baptism, Donna was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be honor and glory, now and forever.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Donna. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. These are the words that Donna picked out to, for us to say today, and it's the love chapter, and I feel like she represented love wherever she went, and this is so appropriate this time. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never ends. But as for prophecy, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesize only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I've been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Amen. Hello, my name is Leanne Flack, daughter of Donna Oliver, and I'm honored to stand here to share my memories and reflections of my mom. Um, as many of you know, my mom loved to cook, and she shared this passion with us. I remember making my first cake when I was eight. 
chocolate, of course, <laughs> and how proud she was of me. She could see that I enjoyed cooking and that this would be one of the many things that we would bond on over the years. She, my favorite meal she prepared was really a tie between shrimp perlo and shrimp and grits. I guess you can tell I was raised in Charleston. Um, one of my mom's early memories and passions was basketball. She played in high school, and she was really one of the best in her area in North Carolina. Um, she taught me how to play, and she loved to watch my games. Um, she would play horse with me in the backyard, and she wouldn't just let me win. <laughs> um, I had to earn it. And when I finally did beat her, the victory was even sweeter. And I believe there was a lot of taunting involved also, because <laughs> um, my mom was very good at basketball. Um, my mom was an extremely strong person that had to overcome many tragedies in her life. She lost her mom when she was 13, and then later her first two children before I was born. Um, she leaned on her strong faith and um, her friends. Surprisingly, she wasn't very overprotective of me, and she was an overall very positive person. Her kindness and warm spirit were really the first things that you would notice about my mom. Despite the many heartbreaks, she was able to move forward and have a great life. She knew that if she did not move forward, it wouldn't be a life at all. I stumbled across some pictures recently and some um, things that my mom had written, and she wrote something that I'm going to read from a little bit of, and it's called Dying to Live is what she titled it. And this is what she said about the title in her own words. I have always believed that we live each day toward death like everyone is dying slowly. I truly believe this was title was a divine thought from God and why I am pre prepared to struggle and through this and finish. Because if we are truly a Christian, it is through the eyes and words of Jesus and Paul that we truly die to live. I leave you with these words from her because we all need to remember that she died to live with God in heaven. My mom will be missed by all, but her memory will live on in us forever. I love you, Mom. You were my first friend, my best friend, and I will miss you more than words can say. Thank you. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so... Would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we come together to remember and celebrate the life of Donna Lee Johnson Oliver. And more importantly, we come together to point to a word of hope. To point to where God is at work, still working in the midst of this time still bringing life and resurrection. Donna filled many roles as a mother, a daughter, a postal worker, a basketball player, a friend, a circle sister. But most importantly, she lived out her life as a child of God. It is because of Donna and her love and her care and her example that we are all gathered here today to remember the love that she shared. 
as Tracy pointed out, Donna picked the First Corinthians reading about love. She also picked the John reading that I, we just heard. Jesus saying, I go to prepare a place for you. I think it's powerful when people are able to look at their own funeral planning, look it square in the eye, and make those plans. I think it's powerful because it shows that we do not fear death. And I think what Donna picked is a testament to her faith, to a faith that carried her through her whole life long, to a faith that was passed on to her and that she imparted to others. The psalm that Addie read today, that was picked out by John and family as well. Giving thanks. That thanksgiving for the love that, John, that Donna shared with us in her life. It's a powerful message. Love never ends. Do not worry because Christ goes to prepare a place for us. And for that, we give thanks. This is a powerful testimony to faith in God, faith and thanksgiving. And it's a very powerful message as we prepare to embark on the journey of Holy Week, where we will follow the narrative of Jesus walking that path to the Last Supper, Jesus walking that path to humiliation and death on a cross but also Jesus rising from the dead. And where Jesus goes, we also go. So when Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also, that is a message of hope that we can carry with us. That is a message of hope and love that Donna took comfort in. That is the message that she picked out for us to hear today. Take heart in that. Let that be a strong and powerful word from God and from Donna and from her faith. And let that love be an example. Despite hardship, there are many who can testify to Donna's love for every message of love that we have here up at, up at the front. <laughs> I'm sure everyone has their story, multiple stories, that would take many meals to complete of how Donna shared love and compassion. Despite all that happened in her life, despite the loss that she faced, the fact that she went on loving and sharing love and being a symbol of love, that wasn't a given. There are many people that could face that kind of loss, the loss of family, the loss of child, two children, and not bounce back from that, understandably. But God was at work. God was at work through those around Donna who picked her up, and she found faith to keep going, to be transformed on the journey, and to share an immense amount of love with everyone around her. So it seems appropriate that we fall back on these words from 1 Corinthians. Love never fails. God's love never fails. God's love didn't fail Donna, and that love was passed on through Donna. God was very strongly at work in her, her life. And there's another word of good news. In the Lutheran Church, we definitely point to all who are baptized as being simultaneously saint and sinner. Yes, we have our flaws. Yes, we fall short from how we should care for one another, and that is a reality for all of us. But God still works through us, and we make up something called the communion of saints. The communion of saints, that is made up of all the people who have gone before us, who have served as examples of faith, whose lives we may remember, and all of those who will come after us. 
and all of those who are here now, the body of Christ, past, present, and future. Donna has joined that communion of saints that has gone on before us, and we will miss her, but we are still connected to her in the body of Christ. God does that. God connects us also in something very special, in the table, in Holy Communion. We believe that this meal is shared not by those of us who are just in this church here and now, but this is a sacred meal, and we share that mealtime with everyone around the world, and we share that meal with all the saints that have gone before us and all the saints who are to come. So when we share communion here and now, we are going to be sharing communion also with Donna. That closeness to all the people we have ever cared for and ever loved, we are going to be sharing that here and now. Christ gave us that example in the Last Supper. Christ gave us that gift in the Last Supper. When he celebrated it with his disciples, at the time that he spoke the words we just read, he was about to die. He was about to be arrested, to walk to judgment and be crucified. And this is what he chose to do in this last moment of time with all of his disciples gathered together. He gave them the meal of holy communion that they could share with one another and be joined together through. He gave them this parting message of comfort that we are all drawn together in God's love. We are going to enjoy this meal of the saints together. That is a promise. That is a promise that God gives us, and God joins us in that meal too. Hang on to that promise with hope. We are sheep of God's pasture. We are the communion of saints, and we are gathered to eat. So thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gather together, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their needs, kneeling as you are able. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, Give courage and faith to all who mourn, and assure and certain hope in your loving care, that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage, who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Christ, who rose from the dead and in whom our hope of resurrection dawns. The sting of death has been removed by the glorious promise of his risen life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and 
join their unending indeed holy almighty and merciful god you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory you so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation in the night in which he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your holy word, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all of your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. <clears throat> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us be bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Come, be filled with light and life. Thanks be to God. The congregation may be seated. At St. Matthew's, our main form of communion distribution is intinction, which means that You'll be given a wafer and you may dip it in the wine. Or if you just prefer to have the wafer without the wine, that's perfectly fine too. Our faith teaches that one element of communion is the full communion as well. If you prefer to have an individually packaged communion or a gluten-free communion, we have these as well. So just ask for that and we can get that for you. Or if you just prefer to receive a blessing, you may come forward with your arms crossed and you will receive a blessing. But this is Christ's church and this is Christ's table and all are welcome at Christ's table. The ushers will direct you when to come forward, starting with the back of the church, coming down the center aisle and moving towards the front.
Will the congregation please stand as you were able? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us commend Donna to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Donna. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed, blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.